that's fascinating. So you were you were talking about speed as well. Mm. How does speed fit into this? Um, <clears throat> I'm just wondering, you, you were speaking to me earlier about that your science can explain phenomena like angels, mm -hmm. like fairies, mm -hmm. things like that. Things like most of us can't see or would not even recognise. Mm -hmm. is, is there some way in which your science can explain these Yes, things? absolutely. It all boils down to speed. Right. Einstein, Albert Einstein said, the sole universal constant is the speed of light, okay? Well, it's the speed of energy, actually. Right. The sole universe, the most important constant in the universe, that's the speed of the energy. And that makes sense because there's nothing else there. There's particles of energy, are just particles of speed. They're either particles of speed waggling or particles of speed spinning. Okay. okay. So... Everything in our world is relative to the speed of light, space, mass, and time. This is relativity because everything in our world is created out of bits of speed of light. In other words, when I measure the speed of those little bits of energy that make up our world through spinning or undulating, it's always the speed of light. Okay. Okay. Now, what I'm predicting, and this is prediction, is that there are other worlds based upon speeds faster than the speed of light. Now, b before I say that, I have to establish my credibility. It's a huge step that I'm, I'm about to take. Okay. So, first of all, I have to tell you this, that as I develop my cosmology out of the physics, I was able to predict that the further the galaxies are away from us, the faster they're accelerating from us. In in 1995, the College of Psychic Studies in London published a book on my work called The New Science of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And in that book, I had three pages of predictions. And embedded in those three pages of predictions was a sentence in which I explained from my cosmology that the further galaxies are away from us, the faster they accelerate from us. Okay. okay? In 1998, the results of observations of supernova explosions and distant galaxies was published. And what they discovered through those observations is that the further the galaxies are away from us, the faster they are accelerating from us. So that kind of indicated your own work. Well, yes. What that did, the whole thing in science is you've got a thing called the scientific method. A theory is only a good theory if it can satisfy two criteria. Now, I'm quoting um, Stephen Hawkins from The Brief History of Time. Yeah. A theory is a good theory if it satisfies true criteria. It must explain the most things with the minimum assumptions, mm. and it must predict the outcome of future observations or experiments. Mm. Now, in my physics, I can explain the whole body of classical and modern physics over a hundred experiments with a single assumption that subatomic particles are vortices of energy, mm. okay? And also, I predicted the accelerating expansion of the universe, and that prediction was published three years before it was discovered as a fact through astronomy. Right. And therefore, and this is all that Einstein did, mm. he simply predicted the curvature of light, the apparent curvature of light as it passes uh, close to the sun, or starlight passing close to the sun and so it's a comparable achievement and so what I'm saying in, to you in this vortex theory is not a hypothesis it's a full blown scientific theory that is actually stronger than the string theory because string theory hasn't succeeded in predicting the outcome of a future experiment whereas my vortex theory has so this gives me credibility as a scientist mm. if I have a proven theory rather than just a vague Mickey Mouse theory, mm. then I'm a force to be reckoned with. In other words, when I make my next prediction, mm. it, it, you know, it's on solid ground. That's very exciting. Mm. Going back to the, I was talking about angels. I'm about to a go lot there. Of people, yeah. A lot of people are fascinated with angels. There are, I don't know what the percentage is, but there is a very high percentage of people today who actually believe in angels, which is extraordinary. Mm. I'm interested to see what you say about that. Well, 
not just angels, but I'm afraid the fairies as well. You know I'm a fairy man, I believe in the fairies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we should go down that avenue because as soon as people start well, talking no, about I, it's rather fun really there's a, there's, a, there's a twinkle in the eye with this because I just love the idea of coming out with the physics of the fairies so it's you just, believe in fairies I do believe in fairies mm. it's, it's, where's the there's, psychiatrist there's, this is, this there's is the a way. mischievousness in this I mean there's a sense of fun the thing about science and physics and that it does take itself rather seriously and so I think you know come, talking about angels is kind of okay but talking about fairies is definitely not absolutely so that's why I deliberately go for fairies because <laughs> <laughs> there's an element of, of mischievousness there there's the imp in me I've got a little bit of fairy fairy dust in me if you see what I mean well I'm sure that will help but anyway so yes let me explain it to you if our universe is formed out of particles of speed and the world we live in is formed out of particles of the speed of light. Mm. We could have other worlds or other planes or levels of reality based upon faster speeds. Now this thinking is in line with quantum theory. Right. Hermes taught us that as above so below, the patterns in, in the atom will be the patterns in the universe. And this is very much like the fractal principle. You know fractal theory or chaos theory, mm. that patterns repeat themselves. So I like to think of a fractal universe where we see the same patterns at every level. Yeah. Uh, I'm a real believer in Hermes. So I'm looking for patterns in the universe by what I see in the atom. And what I see in the atom, and this is fundamental to quantum theory, is that energy occurs in definite steps, right. a quantum leap between one level and another. So I'm predicting that energy occurs in quantum states in the universe. And these quantum states are critical building speeds of a whole plane, a whole world of reality. And our world happens to be built out of the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second, okay? So, there could be other worlds based upon twice the speed of light or three times the speed of light. So that's just a prediction. Okay. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start formulating laws around that prediction and then work with those laws. The first law, <laughs> it, it, and it's very simple, all speeds start at zero and go up to their maximum value. So all speeds are grounded at the same point. So not to the speed of light, not to twice the speed of light, not to three times the speed of light. It's like concentric circles, okay? Right. Or concentric spheres. Ah, now we begin to see the, that ancient pattern, the harmony of the spheres of Pythagoras, which again goes back to Hermes. Even the word planet is based on this idea of diff uh, levels and planes of, of reality, which is what Hermes was predicting, mm -hmm. which is very much quantum thinking. So we get the planes in the, in the, and the levels in the atom, the quantum states in the atom. We're now looking at quantum states in the universe. So they're concentric around the single point. So the single point is what? And Zero speed. Right. So not to the speed of light, not to twice the speed of light, not to three times the speed of light, okay? Like they're concentric. Right. Like Russian dolls, okay? Now, everything in that inner circle is part of the next circle, is part of the next circle. Right. So the world based on the speed of light is part of the world based on twice the speed of light, is part of the world, which in turn is part of the world based on three times the speed okay. of light. So this gives rise to the law of subsets, that the lesser world is part of the greater world, or is a subset of the greater world. And this subset law is your own law? My own so law that, that I'm applying. Okay. That's the first cosmic law that okay. I'm going to work with. Right. If you want the angels and fairies from physics, You've got to work with laws. Okay, so explaining your subset law. Yeah, okay. So I've got a second law. I've got to, got, got to work with two laws. Let's in order... wait a, f a moment on okay, that. Okay, the subset I law is this. I don't understand your subset law Subset law is this, that the world of physical matter is a subset of the world of hyperphysical matter, which is based on twice the speed of light, and the subset of the world of superphysical light, which actually is based on 16 times the speed of light. But that's a bit of insider information. It's not three times the speed of light. There's a big quantum leap gap out there, okay? Mm. So I've done a lot of research. I've gone a little bit further with this, but okay. I'm just going to throw that little one in. So 
the subset law is that the lesser is part of the greater because less 30 miles an hour is part of 60 miles an hour which is part of 90 miles an hour do you understand yes so walking speed is part of bicycle speed which is part of car speed which is part of jet speed mm -hmm. but you can't go as fast as a jet on your bicycle okay but a jet can go as fast as your bicycle when it's just coming away from the terminal. Do you understand? Yes, but how does this fit life and fairies and the universe? Well, 